Welcome back to Fire! In the last episode, um, we used Kay's awesome little gadget to finally figure out what the heck's going- well, Okay, that doesn't seem correct. In the last episode, we saw that. In this episode, we're gonna see, like, what's so different about it. There's a lot that's different! Holy crap! Okay, so let's start with, uh, the fan, I guess? Can I start with the fan? It's worth the charred remains of the fallen ceiling fan. Oh, I've seen a few of these before. They spin around and around and play music. Uh, play music? What? Mine doesn't. Maybe you're thinking of a musical mobile for babies. Ah, <laughs> I love those things as a kid. I still love those things. But they're nothing alike. They're totally alike. They spin those babies right around like a record. Um. Oh my god, that was a reference to that song! Like a... I don't know how it goes, but it was like, you spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round. I am just all nostalgia it up right now. Guess I can see how you might think that. <laughs> they just go round and round, and that makes sense. Okay, so what's wrong with you? This grandfather clock, it is apparently in a different position before the fire. According to the staff members, the clock was flush against the wall before the fire, sir. Um, okay, so why is that? Why would you do something like that, though? Most likely it was moved by someone during the fire. Speaking of which, it's totally 11 o'clock now, but I don't hear any chiming. Huh? That's odd. It was still chiming right on the dot of every hour this morning. Can we actually check that? Maybe the fire damage its internal mechanisms or something. Okay, that actually makes sense. May we look inside the clock? Sure, go right in ahead. Detective Gumshoe, if you could please inspect the insides of this clock. Do you really trust this guy for, uh, fixing this clock thing? Mr. Edgeworth, I found this inside, sir. Looks like a length of wire. So this is what caused the clock to stop chiming. Then why is it not chiming right now? But what was a long length of wire doing inside this clock in the first place? I found some wire in the elevator. Huh. Why would someone do this? It's such a valuable clock. I swear to god, if Gumshoe just like pulled a freaking wire from the grandfather father clock and broke like this. Entire thing, I'm gonna laugh. And perhaps it was Mr. Cochin's killer who did. Okay, so what about the fire itself? This must have been the large green flames Ambassador Palando saw. With flames like these, it's no wonder he could get any- Yeah, I know, it just completely destroyed the door. Okay, by the time you came into this room, had the fire already been put out? It had to have been, she couldn't have gone inside then. Yeah, the fire had died out or something by that time. Then this fire in here only burned from the time the fire started on the third floor. Until the Yatagarasu appeared and caused a stern but ball, I suppose. I guess Mr. Palano was just lucky enough to run into this fire as it was burning, huh? Yes, you could put it that way. And since you were the first to discover the body, we can assume that no one else entered the room until that time. No one other than the person who you were chasing, of course. I knew it! That person I saw was definitely up to no good. But who was it? I mean, that person could even be Mr. Cochin's killer. Um, I thought that was obvious, to be honest. That's very likely to be the case. After all, that person came into this room before you. And must have chosen this room precisely because they knew no one would be in here. That actually makes sense. The if I was to where to prevent anyone from coming in? But then, what did the person set on fire to make the green flames? Hmm, well, whatever it was the person burned, it made rather sizable fire. It must have been the ink, then. Then we've seen something that burns green, right? It's a bit tinier than these flames, but you get what I mean. Yes, and I do believe that what you're thinking is exactly why these flames are green. Which fire-related piece of evidence burns the same color as these green? I thought it was obvious, it was the ink. Take that! They just burnt a bunch of ink. Okay, maybe they didn't just burn a bunch of ink. They are! If you burn this thing up, it really isn't related after all. Shut up, it is! Hey! I wasn't wrong, but I'm always honest. And that's a good thing. Now, just keep on doing it. I, I need to think about this a bit more carefully. If I stay calm, the answer should come to me. It's green flame, it's the same as the other flame. So it has to be what Gumshoe, Gumshoe gave us. Okay, I mean, I was on the same thing. It burned because of the ink. The silhouette lantern. Its green flame comes from the which white crystal oil it's burning. But ink, the ink comes from the white crystal oil, too. That's the fire I was thinking of, too. I love the green it gives off. I think we've now established that the green flames were caused by white crystal oil. Furthermore, we know that there is only one other thing made from white crystal oil. Oh, you mean that thing Mr. Palano was mistaken about, right? The ink? As we found out earlier in our investigation. Um, what? I don't get it. Can you fill me in, sir? You are right in the same room as us. I'll explain it in a way that even you can understand. This is the thing that made White Crystal Oil that Ambassador was mistaken about. That's the ink! Babylon's ink is made from White Crystal Oil. Oh, so it should burn the same color as the flame to the lantern, right? Yeah, so someone just burnt a bunch of important oil! 
That's kind of bad. And we're not from a bottle of that blue ink. Oh yeah, because the ink still closed. Of course, we found the ink Mr. Cochin used on his desk, right? Yes, however. We know that Mr. Cochin was smuggling the ink in massive quantities. Now, what do you suppose he made using all that ink? I believe what he made with that ink is the answer to what gave birth to the green flames. What did he make? The energy coming from you, Mr. Edgeworth. Yeah, I know, but what are we supposed to learn? It would appear that I finally found it. The smuggling ring's real goal. Wait, we did? What? Wait, what? The counterfeit bills, you mean? I mean, that's obvious. I thought that was obvious that they were trying to make counterfeit bills. Great volume of ink to make. That would be... The counterfeit bills that the smuggling ring... Someone set the fire! Someone set fire to the bills for some reason. And then... They didn't know it was made from Bobbly's ink, so the green fern Green. You're kidding! You're saying that it was the creature Cochin who made the counterfeit bills? I thought that was obvious. I am. I believe you could even go so far as to say that this stole Bobbly's printing press. Ambassador, Mr. Cochin had permission to freely use the printing press, correct? Why, yes, and I do remember seeing him use it in the middle of the night. That's not scary in any way. You didn't ask him what he was doing. You didn't ask how much of money thing he did. But never did I think of using it for such a foul deed. You didn't notice all your ink going missing? Bastard, because of your secretary's crimes, you will need to be investigated as well. Nice job, you idiot. Oh, yes, I suppose so. We've caused a bit of trouble for a few countries, haven't we? A few countries? You just started an international incident, you idiot! All because you didn't check your own secretary! It's my duty to search out all who shield Mr. Cochin and conceal this crime. For they are the ones who started the fire in order to destroy the evidence. Okay, so... We learn more about the counterfeit bills. So I'm assuming this is the counterfeit bills? So Babal is really into pushing the tourism industry, huh? Yes, it would appear that way. You know, I'd really love to take a trip. Hey, why don't we take one after this game? What are we even examining? Do you already have a destination in mind? Well, ideally, I'd like to go someplace where I can continue my thief training. That's not a good thing. I want to learn fine art of stealth. Perhaps you should visit the studio where they make the Jam and Ninja TV. Why that one? Hey, that's actually a really good idea, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't help her, Kay. Or don't help her, Edgeworth. Okay, so I'm assuming I did this. Okay, so I have no idea what this is. Apparently, it's not money like I was expecting. What you? Fireplace, huh? So Babal's office had them, too. Two? There's a fireplace in the relatively same location in Alabastian. Didn't I already do this? No, I didn't. Did I'd rather... Yes, I did, actually. I do remember, um, doing this. I want to check out the flag, though. That doesn't help me. That... You know, I, I've already checked this fireplace. I don't care about it. Okay, then. What about this? What's here? That looks like a very comfortable chair. Well, it doesn't look all that broken. Why don't you try sitting in it? No, I better not. It's very important that we preserve the crime scene. Isn't it also a hologram? I'm always touching all sorts of things at crime scenes because I am a prosecutor and it's a part of my job to examine things. My job is to be a great thief, so don't steal the chair! Okay then. What's this? That looks like a. Okay, I don't care about this crap. So uh, that doesn't matter. So what doesn't matter there? What this? You can see the Alabastian embassy through this window. I saw this too! Holy crap, why can't I check anything? You don't mean D to mask this? How do you know this mask? Yes, I get it, but he wasn't trying to be imposter. You're actually trying to be the original, I think. I'm not quite sure. How about this? It looks like one of the Babley's knives was already missing before the fire began. Oh, that's actually important, especially since the other two knives' handles were burned away. The remaining handle was swapped out with the handle from the real murder weapon, and Babal's national treasure was stolen. Poor Babal, don't you think? I'm not sure I would lump the replica statue in with the rest of Babal's woes. Yeah, I guess. What about the statue? The primitive statue had already been swapped, right? It must have been, as this one is covered in suit. What lousy timing, and just as two countries were about to become friends again, too, I think. You're making this international incident seem not as international. That's actually a good thing, but still. It would have been better if I had stolen it for it to get caught up in that fire. Okay, I think I understand your sentiment. However, if you were to engage in theft, I can't look the other way, right? Hey, she knows us too well! Could please stop stealing my lines. <laughs> She's such a good thief! Alright, what do you have to say? You took part in the initial Babal investigation, correct? Yep, sure did. I also helped put out both fires, sir. But that first fire took me by surprise. I had a tough time escaping the fifth floor. Why were you at the- I thought I was on the third floor. First, I tried the elevator, but I guess someone else had the same idea because it was in use. If I hadn't remembered to use the stairs at that point, I'd have been burnt to a crisp. You forgot to use the stairs. 
Wait, that's odd. Hm? We always warn our staff that in case of a fire, it's dangerous to use the elevator. Oh. Wait, someone used the elevator without them supposed to use the elevator? Maybe someone wrote it in a fit of panic? Detective, did you see the Yatagarasu in that came to the Babylon's embassy at all? I didn't personally. And the other staff members told me they never got a good look at the person either, but all we saw was his silhouette. I wonder if you could tell me a bit more about what you discovered, Detective. Okay, so let's see what you did. The second fire broke out around the time the Yatagarasu was spotted in Alabast. That's about what also when a suspicious person was spotted in Baba, which caused some panic. Why does that matter? So no one was able to get a good look at the Yatagarasu that entered Baba? I mean... Technically, I don't know what's going on anymore. There's technically like two, a silhouette of Yatagarasu in the park. There's also the Yatagarasu that K was catching, so I don't know what's going on. You know, still, it was enough to make the people who received the calling card panic even more. A person in a long coat. Sounds like the exact same person I saw. The Yatagarasu that appeared now was proven to be just a fabrication, a shadow. In light of that fact, the Yatagarasu that appeared in Babal is also suspect. You can't be serious! Now when we're this close to capturing the fake, I mean, Callisto Yu, I mean, yeah, I guess, but still, we don't technically know that it was Callisto Yu in the first place. Plus, we still have no idea if this is actually a silhouette or not. Hmm. That doesn't seem correct. Alright, so what do we see? What'd you see, Dan? By the way, Detective, why did you not chase after the Atkarasu? I did, but well, this embassy is huge, sir. Okay, I can understand that, actually. From the other staff members I was with, and it was lost for a while there. You didn't even memorize the layout of the building you were to guard, Detective? Oh, well, yeah, I get. but this thing is really big, to be honest. I'll be sure to do that from now on, sir. Okay, never mind, you're an idiot still. But you know, it was thanks to me being lost, I was able to come to Kay's rescue. Rescue? Oh, is that a fact? Yeah, it was when I lost him wandering around in the third floor hallway, sir. Then how did you... what happened? Oh, that's probably from when I found Mr. Cochin's body. That wasn't really a rescue, that was more of you just saw her. Thought it sounded like her, so I got real worried and ran as fast as I could. And it was thanks to Gummy that Miss Sheena wasn't able to take me away. Okay, fair enough, I guess. And then we came and saved the day. Oh, I see. So he can be useful once in a blue moon. <laughs> we really don't really trust this guy at all. Still, it's not bad that Agent Sheena got here before I did. Hmm, I wonder where Agent Sheena was before you found her here. Yeah, I mean, he, she has to be pretty close. Saw so coming out of the room next door. That's a bit interesting. What was the room next door? Agent Sheena mentioned something about chasing the Yatagrasu herself earlier. Well, she apparently helped in putting out the first fire. Then during the second fire, it heard her she was busy chasing the Yatagrasu. She seems to be a very dedicated agent. You would do well to learn from her. That's actually true, dude. Why are you pointing at me when you say that, sir? Because you're an idiot. We've examined everything in this office, but there is one thing that bothers me. Perhaps I should ask Ambassador Polano about it. Ask about what? Ambassador Polano, there is something I'd like to ask you about. About what? About this office, it appears to me to be very similar to Ambassador Alba's office. For example, the location of the fireplace and the position of the grandfather clock. That's true, actually. They do look similar, but I guess that's just because they're both in the same embassy at some point. Both papers into the Alabastian inside of the embassy. Our two embassies actually used to be one. Yeah, I thought so. Even the pamphlet mentioned that. You're not saying anything we don't know. Which is why the building is bilaterally symmetrical. Wait a minute! Wait a minute, Sheena came from the other building. So, they look exactly the same. Does that necessarily mean that there's an, um, what's it called? There's a hidden compartment and a stair in the fireplace like the one there. We worked hard to make Manny's room look like the ambassador's office. You mean for your handshake uh, photo op with the Jammin' Ninja? Yes, that's right. I mean, what's a photo like that worth that's not taken in the ambassador's office, right? That's fair. Oh, our expression from Babal's obsessively competitive spirit with Alabast, I take it? Yeah, I guess. That piece of information is all I needed to connect the dots. Connect the what dots? Well, anyway, I'm glad I was able to, to be of some help. Okay, we need to logic some stuff. Because I'm starting to think of something. Connected fireplaces... So, that means that, does this place have the connected fireplace as well? Or am I being wrong? Okay, good, I'm not being stupid. The Alabastian and Bababu sides of the building are symmetrical to each other. As we know that to be a fact, and this room's fireplace may also hide a secret passageway. 
A secret pa- Oh yeah, we never told Kay about that. Yeah, there's a secret passageway if you want to know. It doesn't have anything to do with stealing, though. Don't steal using that thing. It's a really bad idea. But it's probably a great idea if you actually want to steal because uh, no one will ever notice that except if you're Mr. Edgeworth because apparently he's in a- He's in giant- He's a bit- bit blah blah blah. I'm not gonna talk anymore. The alabaster the fireplace turned out to have a revolving back wall. A revolving wall? It sounds like something out of a ninja house. Wow, there was a trick to like that built into your fireplace, sir. Yeah, I know. This embassy holds that kind of- How do you not know? You're an ambassador! There seems to be a lot about this room that you don't know about, ambassador. I guess it's time to pay the bill for letting Manny do so much work for me. Okay, fair enough. I- Does, does that mean Manny knew about this, uh, secret passageway? What are you waiting for, Mr. Edgeworth? Let's go get to the bottom of this! Agreed, and my first thought is that it's likely to kill to use a revolving fireplace. Okay, so let's examine the fireplace a little bit, and then do some, um... Looks like just another fireplace, though, doesn't it? That, how do you turn it on again? Now, Bass, I had to push where the X was on the firewall of the fireplace. Oh, I see an X back there, sir. Let's see what happens when I push it. Okay. You scared me, sir. Why would you just yell hold it all of a sudden? There's something about this fireplace that lies in contradiction to the facts. There is? Not an X way you thought there'd be one, right? We did, but that's not what I was referring to. Something is missing from the scene. This is contradiction new for us. Wait, what? Wait. What? Wait, what? I don't understand. What's supposed to be there? That's not there. Grab a ball, pick the perfume. So, lantern, samurai dogs, passion flowers, spear. What's supposed to be there? I don't get it. Wait a minute. Can I X? If you push this X mark, the fireplace wall should turn. Revolving fireplace wall. That's neat, sir. We should hurry up and. Okay, wait, detective. There's something we need to examine about this first. Besides which, there's also something I'd like to test. Like what, sir? I'll tell you later, detective. For now, let's continue. Why don't you tell him now? I don't know! Wait, no. Didn't mean to do that. No, it's not! It's supposed to be here! You don't understand! Examine this. All I see inside this fireplace is starter wood. Huh? That's odd. It doesn't match up with what Mr. Palano said earlier. What is the meaning of this contradiction? Wait, what? What did Mr. Palano say? Wait, what? What did Palano say? Wait a minute. Uh, Bobby didn't go to the fireplace. Or burning files in fireplace. Oh! There's no fireplace! It's supposed to be a fireplace! Wait a minute, something doesn't make sense here. Master Palano, you said that you burned some old files in the fireplace today, correct? Yes, I burned quite a few to aisles this morning, actually. You liar! You're wrong! You didn't! And after you did, did you forget to clean out the ashes from the fireplace, correct? That's right, but why are you asking? And why are you making such a scary face? Because it shouldn't happen. There should be ash somewhere. You didn't- There's no ash here. Take a good look at this fireplace and tell me what you find odd about it. Let's see, huh? Where did all the ashes go? Wait, what? You did- What? That doesn't make sense. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Edgeworth? You don't really think that Ambassador Palano was lying, do you? No, there's no reason for him to lie. Yeah, I mean, like, unless those documents are important. Is it, this is a fireplace that's causing a contradiction. Okay, I wonder if you might update the fireplace data for me. You got it! I'll add it into ashes from the burning files and... What happens? We did? Well, it was nothing. All I did was follow where our leads led us. I just noticed I had a lot of logic that I still have no idea what I'm gonna do. We are about to dazzle? Oh man. Oh man, we're about to dazzle. There really is no need for you two to dance around the name of what I'm about to do. What are we about to do? What am I about to do? I have no idea. Yeah, I already checked this fireplace, so that's a contradiction and all that crap. Yeah, I don't care anymore. Uh, logic, I guess? Missing ashes and the renovations. Possible that someone used a revolving fireplace wall. Did someone use a fireplace wall and that's where the ashes are on the other side? Maybe? That's what I'm thinking and probably wrong, but... Okay, I'm right. The reason as to why the ashes are missing is simple. It's not because someone cleaned them up, right? No, it's not that stupid. Even if someone did sweep them up, the fireplace is too clean for that. Oh! The, the ashes should be on the other side of the door! Room, whatever it's called. Spilled some Babylon's ink while he's burning the files. And yet, there's not a trace of the spilled ink on the back wall anywhere. Well then, I don't know what happened. Well, I'll tell you what happened. The two sides were switched. 
By using the revolving fireplace, whoa, Ash moved into the neighborhood neighboring room. Which means that this is a clear indication that this fireplace was used. That's important. So someone used a revolving fireplace in this room. The person I was chasing disappeared from this room through the there? Okay, fine, that's fair. I believe the person we were in pursuit of is Mr. Coach's killer. And after committing the murder, escaped through the fireplace. But there's only one person who could have escaped from the fireplace, and that was the person who came on the other side. I have, but this is only the beginning. Now we have to chase the killer down. Because if that's true, then Sheena... Sheena should have been able to see who the, uh, who the killer was then. I think. Or she could be the killer, I don't know. If a killer uses a fireplace in this room to escape into the next, then it's only logical for us to talk with the person who was in the neighboring room. We need to talk to Sheena then. Well, the person that was in the next room was- OH! It was that person, sir! Yes, detective. Agent Sheena. So we need to find Sheena now. And also I need to get some- Okay, good, I'm full health. I felt good about that now. More more like Miss Sheena is the killer, isn't it? Let's not jump to conclusions yet. We need to go through that what we know so far. She came running straight into this room, the next one, and instantly accused you. Furthermore, she claimed that it could only have been you that killed Mr. Cochin. I don't have any proof yet, however, I know she is hiding something from us. Yeah, because she has at least been able to see the killer if she wasn't a killer. Why don't we go ask Miss Sheena herself? No, not yet. There is something that needs to be done first. Detective Gumshoe? Sir, is it my turn to do something, Mr. Edgeworth? You've never done anything correct in your entire life. Yes, I have two, pe two part special assignment for you. First, I need you to run a handwriting analysis on Damascus Second's note. Okay, I'll get to the lab boys on that right away. So, literally, you're just our lab. You're just our little pet. I uh, see if you can fit through a revolving fireplace wall. Right now, sir? Oh, man, it's gonna be awesome if you get stuck. No, next decade. Of course, now. We need to test our hypothesis first, don't we? You can do it. I feel like K would have been a better um, subject for this, to be honest, but whatever. Here I go, through the fireplace and back. You shouldn't need to psych yourself up that much for such a simple task, detective. This cannot end in any way, shape, or form good. Wow, the wall inside the fireplace did turn. It's so neat. I want to go through there, too. There really is a secret passageway through here. I had no idea. I was for a second, and he was like, me next, me next. Hmm. It would appear that the rash really was pushed into the other room. Furthermore, the Babylon's Inky Spill Master is there on the back wall. Okay, here I go, sir. Detective, I'd like you to go through there under the same conditions as a killer. Huh? But there's all that ash and stuff. And your point is, now we're short on time, so if you could please hurry on through. Does it really matter? I mean, he could go through any way. Couldn't he? Or she? Or whoever it is? No, not yet. There remains a few more mysteries to solve. Such as Yatakarasu's whereabouts, the other smuggling ring members. The two weapons that made it across the border, the keys of Miss Yusuf. You make it sound like we have no idea what the heck we're doing! Figured out a thing regarding how Miss Yusuf is related to these embassies. <laughs> yeah, I know, she might not be. Mr. Edgeworth, the number of pieces connect a very complicated way in this case. It's almost enough to make one completely mentally exhausted. What are you saying, Mr. Edgeworth? I thought you were the one who said it was easy if you followed the leads. I mean, yeah, but... Is that supposed to be an impression of me, okay? If it's info gathering you need, Gummy and I can help with that. Then, all you'd have to do is show off your fancy schmancy logical deductions, okay? Yeah, you can do that too, though! Does show off? Does it really end being boastful when I do that? It's not overcomplicated matters, okay, Mr. Edgeworth? We've been so focused like a laser on only what seems to be straightened out of place. It's no wonder nothing's clicked and we haven't unlocked anything yet. But if we think things through calmly, the answer should come to us. She sounds like us now! Okay. That's the sort of thing I say to myself. Aw, that's nice of her. When I'm practicing now to unlock Pala. Okay, never mind, just got less nice. That is something that I hope practice doesn't make perfect for your sake. Whoops. Ha! Ah, yay! It looks like you're back to your straight-laced self again. Hi, Mr. Edgeworth, the Maxer. Okay, so he can fit. Good work, Detective. And he's all probably all covered in suit now. Yep, he is. Looks like you can use that fireplace like a door, sir. Are you alright, Gummy? I I'm okay. Just a bit of ash and dust, that's all. Your jacket has gone quite filthy. I see that hem has practically turned black. Yeah, well, quite a bit of the unburned ink got on, sir, sure. You should probably get that without it, besides if some um, getting set on fire, I guess. You can pay the cleaning bill for a trench coat. Nice! I mean, you don't really have the money for it. If it was a car I actually cared about, then I'd get it clean, but you know, it's okay. I guess sentimentality doesn't really run with gumshoe. See, very well then, as you wish. So because Gummy was able to climb through the fireplace, we know it can be used, right? 
Yes, but that's not all we learned. We actually learned one other important fact. And that is... I'll have to explain it to you later. Right now, we need to deal with the handwriting analysis of Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir! I'll be back before you know it! He's gonna take forever, isn't he? Mr. Kutchin's handwriting will take a bit of time. Let's go and wait in the theatrical trials, along with Agent Lang and Agent Sheena. We need to talk to Agent Sheena. Oh man, that was cool! We learned a lot! We learned that Sheena was investigating something important. Um, we learned, uh, that the fireplace is good. We learned that these people don't know what the heck they're doing half the time. So yeah, in the next episode, we're actually going to see if we can talk to Sheena, I guess. And it's Neon3D2. Please like, subscribe, and we'll see you all next time.